Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of the Ranger Women Supporters Group podcast. A very enjoyable Sunday, you will agree, Car? I will indeed. A lovely sunny day through in Edinburgh and come away with a shiny thing, which is exactly what we wanted, so can't be mad about it. Yeah, so just Car tonight, Alan's on his travels again, as anybody that follows Alan will know, so <laughs> I'll just be Car and I talking you through today and see where, see where we get to. So we'll just head straight at it. We started with Vic Essen and Goals, back three of Hill, Medag, Doherty. Uh, we had Chelsea, Cornet, and Olivia McLaughlin kind of just in front of the defence. Then we had Hay, Rowe, and Macaulay. And then Hardy and Ross up front. What did you think of that, Car? I mean, it's the perfect team for me. That's exactly what I thought would happen. I love to see that Mia was picked, as she should be for all games. You know, Jane Ross and Rio up front, exactly what we needed. I think it just worked well, really well together, everyone in. So I couldn't, couldn't complain about that at all. It was actually quite buzzing for a change, because normally I'm like, oh, maybe I'd put her in instead. But it was perfect, really. Yeah, we discussed kind of just before we were heading into Tyne Castle, whether it would be Vic or Jenna, because we've seen it kind of get the cup finals before and then Jenna comes back in despite Vic being the kind of cup keeper, but good to see that Vic was actually trusted. She, she had a few bits and pieces to do, but I think she deserved her place after the, the game she's played. Yeah, I think Jo made that decision and she was going to stick with it. It would have been a bit unjust for Jenna to be brought back in for the final when Vix played every other game. So nice to see that she stuck by that decision. Don't think it really made too much of a difference. You know, they had a couple of shots and one goal as we'll come on to, so it didn't didn't bother or trouble her too much. And, you know, she got the opportunity to lift the cup with the rest of the team. Yeah, and um, obviously, as you see, um, Mia... Macaulay started, it was obviously exactly what we wanted, it would probably have been what we wanted last week as well, but we'll not go on about that because we're <laughs> happy today. But she was just, as you expect, just an absolute little terrier for the start. Um, she was kind of creating, her, they kind of gave her, surprisingly they gave her a lot of space in that well, right wing that was left, right in front of us. As the, the, she was literally sad that we were just like screaming for them to give it to her, and then as Mia does, she just pops up and gets first goal of the day, as many predicted. But she's for someone so young, like she's just so clinical and unbelievable. And somebody would definitely need to give another contract. <laughs> Uh, a five-year deal wouldn't be too bad to go with that but I mean exactly what she does she just finds a space runs into it keeper comes off the line has made the decision then and she just slots it past her into the back of the net and I was listening I can't remember who it was somebody done an interview with her post-match I don't know if it was Rangers or who it was and she said if I get the chance to shoot I'm going to shoot and that's exactly what I want from any player in the Rangers side but especially from you know the wide players and she gets more opportunities than most I think they planned on Brogan being the problem, so they kind of targeted her more on her side, so Mia had the freedom of the pitch until she went off. It was just incredible, and that's what she does. A, a moment for her, we were speaking about this, last year at the Cup Final, her and Laura Berry and a couple of other players, younger players, were sat in front of us, and to think that a year on, she's playing and scoring the first goal in a Cup Final is just incredible. So, I, I mean, it just shows that the young players, the young talent have got you know a pathway through to the first team to play in, in these big games, it's just incredible. Yeah, things that dreams are made of, you're sort of watching the team as you're kind of coming through and then suddenly you're the one that's scored it. I think we kind of briefly touched at the game that every time the ball was coming to Mia, there was a, like a, a buzz in the stadium, like around the Rangers fans that they were like, oh, something's going to happen. And I think that must be like, as just such a young lassie, she must be like, oh my God, like there's pressure on her, but she can handle it. And she's obviously, because it was kind of just outside the box that she did that shot. And you're like, the way you should be taking a a shot like that and just absolutely hammering it home. But yep, got us off to a good start, but it wasn't to last very long as Partick got back kind of on level terms. Stunning goal by Rachel Donaldson, so give her a shout out and give her her dues because if that was a goal scored in the men's game, that would be on highlight reels everywhere. But absolute brilliant goal. But I think it just fired, kind of fired us back up to be like, no, you've that's you had your goal, but 
this is your cup, we're keeping it, and it kind of fired us back up. It did. Um, I mean, had we scored that, you'd be buzzing. There's nothing Vic could have done about that. It's a screamer straight into the top bins. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, I think it kind of woke us up. We didn't start the best. We looked a bit, I don't, not nervy. Nervy is not the word I want. They just looked a bit kind of not quite there yet. A lot of passing, there wasn't quite 100%. But after their goal, they just kind of fired up again. We thought, right, get another one before half time, and that, you know, we go in, that's fine. And then the team just woke up and saw blood, I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And after that, obviously, it was it kind of kicked us back into gear. Rachel Rowe was getting pulled about left, right, and centre. I think the amount of times she was pulled, I'm surprised she had a shirt, full shirt left at the end of the game, but she was the next one to step up and fire us back in front, and she had one of the most bizarre celebrations you'll ever see. I mean, hell of a goal. I said, because we'd had so many corners before then, I was like, one of these has to go in. And then we took it short. And I think I said, well, not if we take a shorty. And the second I said that, she turns in the box and a curling effort dinks off the underside of the bar and in. And we all went mental because what a goal. She doesn't seem to score normal kind of easy goals. She loves a, you know, a 30 yard screamer. But and then she <laughs> cups her ears and then I don't even know how to describe it. It just like slides along. She doesn't knee slide. Her whole body. Yeah, really slides. Slides. Really <laughs> like, just unbelievable. She's just some lassie, by the way. I, I love her, but that's what she can do. And I think that's what we needed to do because they were trying to block us a bit, which was happening. So you just get that space in the box and take it a long shot and you never know what could happen. But that really did set us up then to just kick on and just go and keep our hands on that trophy. Yeah, she's one of the players that, she gets the ball, doesn't lift her head as much as you'd want her to. It's kind of just literally a tap and she could have half the time and then she gets surrounded by players and then she's like loses the ball and then she scores her like that. It's just absolutely unreal. But yeah, we've had another couple of chances to kind of put herself further in front. Um, and then I think they probably had a couple of chances. It was quite end to end. They did give us quite a good, a good final, to be fair. But then Rio puts us pretty much to bed when she puts, gets her goal just on the kind of stroke of half time. It looks kind of extra time at half time. Uh, it was like the injury time, the injury time at half time, because I think that's when Mia had got injured. I think somebody had stood on her hand or something, so she was down for a wee while. So there was a couple of extra minutes added on. But Rio just slots it straight through the legs of the keeper and into the back of the net. You can't really ask for much more. It's just that really just set us up then because we were getting a little bit nervous. So maybe they could come back into it. They were having chances. We looked a bit shaky. But that just, that really just put it to bed then and went into half time, just buzzing, a real buzz around our end. Everybody was just having a great day in the sunshine and enjoying themselves. And the players looked like they were enjoying themselves at that point as well. Like, it was just a good day all right. Yeah, so we go in. Half time three one, and I think the effort that Partick put into that kind of first half was quite telling. In the second half, I think they came out and they were all kind of looking quite kind of tired, and that within the first like 10 15 minutes of that second half, so it kind of slowed the pace down a bit. I think because they were still trying, but I think they just didn't have that energy. I think the adrenaline and that of them and the buzzy like all week, the build up, and that just kind of got to them, and it just kind of was more subdued. And Liv really puts it to bed when she scores uh, on 53 minutes. Yeah, I mean, Liv McLaughlin seems to be loving her time here, doesn't it? Doesn't she? She's having a great time. and It's like a someone takes a shot, it's a re, not rebound, but it's a second ball and Liv just puts it past the keeper. Not much more you could ask for. And the place goes wild and that's that, put to bed, the game's done. But part of just didn't have the legs in them anymore. I'd noticed that, I think it was Henderson, I'd noticed she just couldn't track back she couldn't run and she well not track back track forward she was a striker and she just didn't have the legs in her to make the runs that she needed to do so there wasn't much chance for them they made some subs we made some subs as we'll come on to but the, the game was done at that point it just turned into a bit of a well we had a few shots probably should have had a few more goals to be fair we kept knocking on the door but you know nothing came of it but it didn't really matter at the end of the day it was 4-1 and she couldn't ask for much more yeah, definitely. So I think there was also a couple, was it was it the first half or the second half that Cathy kind of took a knock as well? We were like, oh, here we go again. Was that the first half? Where players, players took a batter in because Rachel Rowe was getting pulled about. Cathy had a knock, Mia had a knock, 
we were just like, oh, please, no more injuries. But I think I think that was the first like towards the end of the first half. Yeah. I think or was it the second half? I don't know. They were being very physical anyway. No wonder they were like <laughs> they were that tired. The second half they were as like as we always speak about every week. The ref wasn't very great. Kept both for both, both sides. Um, There's a lot of things go. There was I think Liv pushed some one of their players practically into her kind of technical area and she just ran <laughs> just ran away. It wasn't even a yellow card given. It was bizarre, but. Yeah, it's um, 60 minutes. I think some much needed subs were kind of needed because obviously we need that kind of we needed a bit freshened up. So Mia, um, Rio had it, Jane Ross went off, and on came Lizzie, Arnett, Sarah Ewens, and Kirsty Hewitt. So, like the main one there is good to see Kirsty back. I think everybody, I think she got the loudest cheer that she was back after an injury, and obviously good to see Lizzie and Sarah getting more minutes as well. Yeah, I think we needed some subs at that point, and Alan, who sat beside us, called them perfectly. You know, the front two coming off and changing, and the Lizzie coming on for Mia, who you know took that that knock in the first half with her hand. But Kirsty Howitt got the the biggest cheer. Everyone loves Kirsty Howitt. She's you know one of the players for us that everybody knows whether they follow the women's team or not. They know of Kirsty Howitt, so incredible that she's back. Unfortunately, didn't get a goal, but. You know that will come in time, but it's just good to have these players back, and hopefully that means that going forward we're getting a bit closer to having Rachel McLaughlin back and then having a few. Well, I say a few. There's only one other one, Kirsty McLean, back soon. But the way she was climbing over the advertising boards today, I think she's fairly close. But don't take that as gospel. I don't think that's true. But I think she was just buzzing, you know, with what happened today. But I great to have Kirsty out back. Much needed firepower. You know, Rio might go off the boil again. Jane might struggle a bit, and we've got that other option there, which is good. Yeah, it was interesting to kind of see her alongside Sarah Ewens as well, which seemed, I think that actually kind of worked. Because I, I would have thought they would have been quite similar the way they both play, but it, kind of, it did kind of work. Well, obviously, never got any more goals after that, but it gives Joe that another kind of combination that she can kind of work with and see kind of if there is any injuries or that, that it's another combination that we can kind of try. Yeah, I mean, Sarah does the hard work, doesn't she? She makes the run, she gets the ball and then plays it off to whoever. And Kirsty kind of does that as well, but I don't know whether in time Sarah will do that and then Kirsty will just stay up you know, in and around the box for her to get the ball to. But we'll wait and see. It's good to have another partnership and see where Joe wants to take. Because, you know, Kirsty was playing with Rio a lot. They worked quite well together. So it's nice to have those different combinations that Joe, can, Joe and Jay can play with. So it's just good to have players back in it. Yeah, definitely. It gives them that option as well of, or kind of confusion of the opposition that if maybe one time Kirsty's going to do the hard work, Sarah stays up and then they can kind of switch, like how we switch the wings, where like Brogan and kind of Mia were switching quite a lot. It kind of confuses them, it means that they're no kind of, they're just unpredictability, I think, that we've kind of got through the team that they can kind of move about and they can't really plan totally for us because the players can move a bit and give us that kind of versatility. So Kirsty how it did have a couple of chances, but you could see that she was a bit rusty. They kind of went high and wide and not very handsome. Um, Sarah did quite well, I think, when she came on. I think I don't know if she had a couple. Did she have a chance? Yeah, she made a really good run, and then I think she'd laid it off. I think that was the Rachel Rowe chance that she just then held on to the ball too long and probably should have shot the first three seconds, but just held on to it too long. But she was making the good runs, and you can see that she's, she's a good player. She's got that in her. I just wish she would maybe put her front to the goal more often than her back to the goal, and then maybe she'd get more opportunities. But, again, good to have players that can come in and change things, and that's the difference between last season, having a manager that's willing to change things during the game and even just switch the players around, whether it be subs or whether it actually be players that are on the pitch. It's just good to have that versatility, as you've said. Yeah, and I think even Lizzie, it shows the difference, obviously, in the kind of obviously part opposition because obviously part of her like part time, and they were tired. And Lizzie kind of had some good runs in that in her. She was kind of getting past them, setting up chances. But um, obviously, as we say, no, no more goals kind of came. But it was good that she was kind of that will build her confidence after. I think it maybe turned a bit of a beating last week, so it was good that she was getting some good runs and balls out of the box as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And even like Brogan had a really good chance towards the end that, you know, had it gone in, probably would have been goal of the game. 
just everybody was they were firing everything into the box. Lizzie was getting right in about it at the box and you know, players couldn't handle her. She was then getting the ball in there, but they were able to kind of hold the fort a bit, like in and around the box, but outside it they just weren't we were getting past them, no bother. But again, part time team can't really expect they gave us a good game and hell of a cup final for anybody that maybe doesn't watch women's football to watch that and say, Well, actually that is it's quite good. Do you know what I mean? And to come from us who only ever want Rangers to win. It's quite good to have an opposition that put up a, a bit of a fight and not just an absolute trouncing because I don't think that's a good advert for the game. Yeah, that was another thing we could have discussed. We could, we could go for more goals, but they were obviously still kind of sitting back and just kind of soaking up the pressure. But you didn't, you didn't always want it to be like eight, nine goals for us because then people look at it and they just go, well, Obviously, that was going to happen. Whatever, it just kind of looks a bit negative. But no, they gave us. They definitely gave us a good game. Uh, Seven eight minutes. Chelsea coordinate and Kathy Hill went off, and Libby Bands and Young Ely Austin came on. Really good to see. Obviously, Libby Bands back gives us that other option in the midfield, and then Ely Austin coming on another youngster that's came through the ranks, and she's was buzzing at the end that she'd managed to get on and obviously get her first senior medal trophy. Yeah, both. I think it makes a difference, doesn't it? You know, the game's put to bed at that point, so Joe can make those changes. I think the Cathy one, maybe the, the injury did happen in the second half because that's why she was in subbed off. I think, I can't remember, my memory's not great anyway. Yeah, but Ailey coming on is a massive moment for her. And she didn't look out of place, I will say. She, like, she's a talented young player. The fact that she came on and just soaked it up and was making really good passes and a couple of good runs, a few headers here and there, and was just you know doing what she needed to do. Libby, again, another player that if we could keep her next season, I'd love to, but I, don't, I just I don't see it happening. I think she'll go back to Brighton with a medal around her neck and be like, look what I did, and she'll break through and you know, be the top talent that we know that she can be. But while she's here, we'll enjoy her. She does offer offer us that physicality, which they were already being quite physical, but I think they struggled a wee bit when the likes of Libby and Ailey and, you know, Kirsty Howitt and that came on because they were just running past them and they weren't getting in, and, you know, near them where they were with grabbing shirts and all over Rachel Rowe and there was just chaos at points. But never mind, we, we got through it and everybody's happy. Yeah, well, the physicality, obviously, I don't know if people have watched like the follow inside, which if you haven't, go watch it because it's very yeah. good. Um, but there was an interesting bit of that, in it when Joe was kind of, I think it was Kirsty Howitt, and she was kind of saying to her, like, come, like, push into me, like, be more physical. So it was interesting to see that they obviously have kind of taken that on board and were kind of like, you're not going to just shove us off the ball. Like, I think that's kind of probably what we've maybe been missing a wee bit, just that get in their faces as much as they're going to get in theirs because they're going to come for us. We've got that, like the final today and then we've, we're like leading the way across all the kind of competitions. So you need that kind of bit between the teeth and grit and determination. So get in their faces as much as they're going to. So it was good that kind of Joe's obviously picked up on that as well and to kind of get that fire in them and just keep winning things. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly, I think you're right. We were kind of missing that. We were getting, not bullied, but we were getting pushed around a little bit and then just complaining to the ref rather than actually just being like, no, well, you're not going to push me off. You're not going to elbow me. This isn't happening. I'm just going to keep going. And Rachel Rowe today was having her shirt pulled. She was being hacked to pieces, kneed, elbowed, and she was still coming away with the ball. I don't. I genuinely don't know how she does it. It's something about being in that situation when there's maybe two players on her and she can just dribble away from them and she's still got the ball and she's away. I think she thrives on that. Give her an open space and her head will be down and she'll be looking at the ball and then she'll end up losing it. But give her a tight space with two players on her and she'll come out with it, no problem. But it's nice to see that we're working on that. Joe's always kind of refreshing stuff and keeping on top of everyone what we need to be doing. So it's nice to have a manager that's looking at the whole picture and focusing on what needs to be focused on at that moment. So it's good. Yeah, definitely. So as you touched on, Brogan had a lovely chance that we were all kind of wishing about that. And then Nick equally had an amazing chance. It just kind of, because it just kissed the bar and went out, I think, when it came back in and then it just, they managed to clear it. But 
Graham had been saying the full game, Nick's going to score, Nick's going to score, it's going to be a screamer, and then it was so so close, but just wasn't meant to be, and it finished 4-1. Yeah, I mean, Nick does that, doesn't he? She can't just, like, cut inside and have a shot. She has to, like, be a million miles away from goal and hit a curling effort. And, you know, a few of them have gone in. It's just unfortunate today that it didn't, because I think that would have been the cherry on top of the cake for Nick. You know, she's a captain. She gets to lift the, the trophy back to back. She gets to have a good time. The manager's, you know, really impressed by her. She's having a great time. And a goal on top of that would have just, I think been the highlight of the day for her but not to be and I'm sure one of them the rest of the season one of them will go in and she'll keep trying because that's what she does but it's just it's just so good to have a team that seems to bounce back you know we don't want to talk about last week but maybe heads could have gone down maybe could have felt a bit sad for themselves but to go into that the way that they did and just you know we didn't run over them but the second half we really just dominated and we did exactly what we need to do so we need to remember we can do that and just focus on that for the rest of the season going forward got the first trophy got a couple of more to focus on now that's out the way they'll go and have a good night tonight which i'm sure they will <laughs> a few sore heads tomorrow and then get back on it in the training pitch when they go back in for training and we'll see what the rest of the season brings yeah and it's one of those that you hope that now this kind of win of this as it's in March, that this kind of snowballs into the rest of the season, their confidence is high, and then they just go and steamroll everybody and add even more, kind of put the trophy cap at it at the end of the season. Yeah, it's exactly one. I think last year we won it in December, and I think that was too long of a time. So by the point that we got to the you know the Scottish Cup final and the end of the league, it almost had been forgotten about by a lot of people. And then it was like, oh, no, actually, they won the League Cup. I think now having this and then you go into April with the league games and then the Scottish Cup semi-finals, and then you go into May, you've got the end of the league and then the Scottish Cup final. I think it's close enough that it gives them that momentum to just kick on now and just go and, you know, full well at everything and just do what they can do. And hopefully we'll get... You know, Rachel McLaughlin back soon and spoke to her after the game. She said she's not far away, but she wouldn't give a definite answer. But I think she'd maybe had a wee drink. So she maybe <laughs> told me more than she should, but I'll tell you after what she told me. But, she, you know, she everyone was just enjoying themselves. And it's nice to see that, she, you know, she said to me, I might not be on the pitch with them, but I'm their biggest fan. So it's nice to just be on the sideline cheering them on, which is nice to see that the whole bunch is really there for each other. Even Joe had posted after the game a picture of all of them on the bus. And she said, my girls, the fact that she's really bought in, it's just so good to have a manager that's not, it's me and them, it's us. It's really, it's just a whole collective. And Donald's really bought in as well, came over after the game shook all our hands and said you know that's the first one out of the way we'll, we'll, we'll drive forward now and focus on the rest it's just good to have that ethos across the board yeah and it's one of those moments as well as soon as they win there was the banter between the players and the, the fans and the whole like we were praising the full like backroom team and having banter with them and that and it's good because it's like it, they soak that in and then Joe will be using that like remember how that felt and then use that because you want that feeling again and I think as you say we've been close enough to the next this kind of running because now it's like games const other than after the international break which is mm. a couple of weeks and then it's game like Wednesday Sunday Wednesday Sunday and it's just remember the, how you felt like today and then use that as your motivation and just keep driving forward you're going to get a nice summer break but buckle down enjoy your night tonight and then back to the hard work starts again the next game, like on Tuesday when they're back in training. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Joel and that will have a good night tonight, but I'm sure she'll be sitting with them, still talking to them about the game and talking about everything and remember what happens next week. So we've got to you know, get back in and focusing about that. I don't see her as being one that will just fully let loose and won't be thinking ahead. I think Joel is that kind of manager. She's always thinking about what, what can I tweak, what can be done. And it's just, it's great that the whole squad's there together. And, you know, we had a great day. I think <clears throat> people complain about Tynecastle, but I think it's quite a nice venue for that kind of occasion. Um, both sets of fans, you know, what was there, 4,786 people at the game, which, you know, is a new record, which is incredible. They, like, it was basically sold out both sides, just both travelling support, incredible. You know, pretty loud, I will say, part maybe a bit louder than us at points, but, you know, that is what that is. But so many 
you know, faces there, so many kids. Like, it was just an all round a good day for everyone. You could see the players really soak that up and everybody just had a great time. And we want that again come May. We want, you know, another two times where we get to go back to Highbrooks and celebrate that with the with the girls and then coming off the bus and whatever. It's just exactly what you want from the team. So hopefully now this is not the first and last that we can kick on now and just go to the end of the season and win everything. Yeah, and I think as well, as we can barely hear it, we need to go back and watch it, but Rachel Rowe even said when she was getting interviewed, like, thanks for that way support, like, we heard you and that as well. So I think it was as much as it was obviously competitive on the field, I think like we appreciated how Patrick gave us a game, made it a proper final, because it's on Sky Sports, you want it to be like, this is what we watch every week, this is like the the kind of brand, so we get like more games on Sky Sports. I think it's exactly what like the SWPL would want as well. Like, you know, it means that Tyne Castle, because it's, cause it's kind of on that slope as well, I think the atmosphere fed perfectly onto the pitch and they gave us back. I, I think just all around it was just a really good day. They were obviously loud. We were being loud back. There was the banter between the fans, banter between the players on the pitch. <laughs> Nick and Cody had a few like glances and laughs at each other, but just all round, and then obviously we had the buses going, Patrick had buses going, just getting as many people there as we could. It was just a brilliant effort by pretty much everybody that was there today, and players, fans, backroom team, the SWPL, it was just a really well put together. Even the entertainment that was outside, the kids were buzzing, the big kids as well, Graham, <laughs> were on the 360 thing, there was the music, it was just a really, really enjoyable day. And if people are all buzzing about it like we are, then they tell people and that's what drives their attendances up. It's, yeah. it's exactly what we want. It's good for the league as well to have a competitive league, to have other teams that are willing to challenge. And, you know, <clears throat> we played Potterick earlier this season and it was a nil-nil draw. So teams are getting better. And I think that does help having more, you know, competitiveness in the league and then going into the Cups as well. You know, you don't want it to become a close shop, and right now it kind of is with the top three. Of course, there's that you don't know who's going to end up on top at the end of the season, but there is that you know, you know, there's going to be some form of those top three. So it'd be nice to have other teams being able to kick on and add a bit more professional. Maybe it'd be you know full time players and then going into fully full tar full time. It just adds a bit to it, and then more people showing up for women's games. I'm sure. A lot of those Partick fans are maybe of the men's side because I'd seen a few on Twitter that, you know, had been at the men's game and said, oh, we're going along to the cup final. So it'd be nice if that translate back into going to the league games, more people showing up for these games. And it just gets more eyes on it, gets more money into the game and it just, you know, grows it more, which is exactly what we want. So, you know, it's a good, you know, stepping stone. I'm sure Fiona's sitting in her office, maybe not right now, but sits in her office thinking of plans and what to do and how can, you know, what can we do? get going to help the SWPL but I say she's done a pretty good job and then it's up to us as fans to keep showing up you know keep putting the effort into it that we put into it and then other supporters groups and whatever to just kind of keep things keep the ball rolling I suppose. Yeah definitely but great effort all around as we say so talking of great effort who was if you could pick one your player of the match? I mean it's got to be Rachel Rowe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was kicked to pieces. She was her shirt pulled. She scored a wonder goal. She, you know the noising up of them because obviously there was stuff being said on the pitch that you know we weren't privy to. But the fact that she's cupping her ears and she's giving it large at the end, with her arms up, and she's just such a character. And for that to be her first cup final and then to go in and win it, and you can, you know, she did her post match with Sky. I think it was after the game. And you can see how excited she was by it all. And she just, I just, I love Rachel Rowe. I love what she offers us. And she's really bought into the whole ethos of the club. So I think for a goal alone, but just everything else today, I think is Rachel Rowe. Yeah, it's a tough one because <laughs> they all done so well. They I did. was Rachel Rowe because it was like for that reason. But I think Liv McLaughlin, I like, I don't, I think she does want to go back there and really prove herself in the WSL, but. One more season, love, please. <laughs> Nick, if you're watching this, convince <laughs> please. Because she is just, like, she's 19. And I think at first we're kind of concerned because we're like, oh, we've lost Kirsty McLean. And the, the, we, we do miss her. But Liv's really settling into that role and just and added another goal today. But she's just 
it's phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, she, but then you could say Mia and you could say Rio and you, you know, you could lift up anyone. But I think Liv has really bought into everything and we're, not, we're never going to be able to afford her. Do you know what I mean? But maybe another loan. And the right. fact that yeah. Jo has obviously worked with them before. So what other gems is out there that she's worked with before that she might bring in in the summer? It just makes it very exciting, doesn't it? The, the contacts that she's got. Yeah, definitely. I think as Jay as well, I think she's probably got a few upper sleeves, so it'll be a very interesting summer, but that's way, way down there. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, we've got the retained the Sky Sports Cup, and then next week we are back to league action. Who do we play? Because there seems to be nobody else in the league. We play Hibs at Broadwood. <laughs> at least we're at home. At least we're finally at home. I feel yeah, like we've not been at Broadwood for months. <laughs> Genuinely. It's a two o'clock kickoff and the tickets are on sale. So if you liked what you've seen today, then come on down and join the fun. Um, like there's going to be much changes to the team. Do you think with the effort that was put in today, there'll be many changes or would you kind of keep same same as today? I mean, I think Jen will be back in goal. I think that's kind of the way that it's been. I don't know, it depends on kind of fitness and, you know, how they, I mean, they all looked okay after the game. Like, it depends how much fun they are, is what you want to uh, see. <laughs> no, nah, I'm sure by Sunday they'll be fine. Nah, they'll be fine. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I think that probably is Joe's strongest starting eleven. so I don't know if she'll just stick with that or if she'll want to give Kirsty, you know, Kirsty Hibbert some more minutes and with it being Hibs again, we've played them, you know, twice already this month, so we've already kind of played them twice, two different games, I suppose. So Jo kind of know what she needs to give. And I think Sarah Ewan's had quite good games against them. So maybe she comes back in from the start. I don't know. But I genuinely think you could start Ailey and we'd, we'd still go out and have quite a good game. So it doesn't really matter. I think across the board, it's just nice to have be able to name eight subs again and not <laughs> be struggling to, with the bench. So it's just nice to be in that position. And hopefully we make it three for three this month against Tips. Yeah, definitely. I think the good thing with the players coming back is now you start to see that kind of strength again the, in the kind of competition for places as well. It's like we were quite thin for a bit there, but now there is that kind of competition between players. Rachel, as you say, will be back soon, so that kind of gives another bit of competition in the back line. So, yeah, we'll just need Kirsty to get that knee brace off and she'll be back soon, hopefully. Probably not as soon as the others, but back before the kind of end of the season anyway but we shall wrap it up there let everybody go and enjoy their evening well let us enjoy our evenings because we'll watch this later but yep champions again one down two to go see you again soon <laughs>